astounding NBC world premiere miniseries about an age when armies march for the glory of empire. This is A.D., where power-mad rulers fight for their pleasures. They killed him. They've been waiting to kill me, too. Where helpless slaves fight for their lives. Children. You have seen the bottom of the pit. And the world is more evil than any man knows. A.D., the epic saga of the Roman soldier and the Judean slave girl, torn apart by different worlds, drawn together by desires neither can resist. Yes. <laughs> He must watch while she is shared by others. She must wait while he serves another woman. You will grow to know me, to like me. The Emperor's wife. This old man has much to fear. The sweeping panoramic view of the real life people and events that altered human history. Even to the end of the world. A time when one man's death gives birth to a new faith. A.D. The incredible love story of the Hebrew warrior and the senator's daughter, sworn enemies destined to fall in love on the battleground of the Colosseum. The two greatest athletes of their time fighting back against the evil rulers of the ruthless Roman Empire. The most wicked era the world has ever known. Flagrant promiscuity. Pleasure. Make it. Adultery with the emperor's wife. The shocking decline of Rome. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. A.D., the story of Mary, the virgin mother, Jesus, and the disciples of Christ. Show them in the arena. Make them part of the game. The savage rituals of an empire mad with lust. Ah, damn you, what? The wrathful curse that struck men blind and the incredible miracles that brought forth new hope. In the name of the Lord, rise up. He makes the blind see and the lame walk. Praise to his name! The passions that betrayed a nation. Our climb to the imperial throne may have started in this bed. The revolution that changed mankind and the tragedy that destroyed a city, a country, and an empire. James Mason, Jennifer O'Neill, John Hausman, Susan Sarandon, Ben Vereen, Ava Gardner, Jack Warden, Colleen Dewhurst, Richard Roundtree, Anthony Andrews, Ian McShane, Anthony Zerby, Richard Kiley. Hail Caesar! And introducing Amanda Pays as the young Jewish girl thrown into slavery by the Romans. Neil Dixon as the soldier who must choose between serving as emperor and the woman he loves. Diane Venora as the senator's daughter who defies her father and becomes a gladiator. And Cecil Humphreys as the Hebrew warrior who finds his love in the Roman arena. From the creators of Jesus of Nazareth and Marco Polo, every night a spectacular new adventure. Where good and evil collide. The television event of 1985, A.D. Next.
clear pass. Look. Shalom Aleichem. Peace be with you. Where are you going? To Emmaus. Good. We'll go together. The light is with us. Come. Come. You look worried, sad. We've nothing to be cheerful about. What sort of man are you? Where are you from? You heard my greeting. A Jew, and you haven't heard what happened. They killed him. They nailed him on a tree. Jesus. The teacher from Galilee. Teacher? He was the only one. The only. We hope that he was the one who would redeem Israel. Let us rest for a while. Come, tell me. We wanted to be with the Master and the Apostles for Passover. We were delayed, stopped by some Roman troops. Why are you going to Jerusalem, the rest of the Roman nonsense? For the Passover, we said. Are you sure, they said. You look to us like a couple of these zealots, troublemakers. No, we said, just for the Passover. We didn't tell them we were looking for the Twelve. We got there in time for the bad news. Whipped him, nailed him up, took him down, put him in this tomb, in this garden. Joseph of Arimathea? Yes. His garden. The tomb's a kind of cave in it. We went there. The least we could do. Pray. The body wasn't there. Nobody could have taken it away. Not with all those guards. He's gone. Left us. <laughs> Nothing's left. 
not even his body. You are slow of heart. Listen, remember the scriptures. All this was foretold, you know that. Nothing has happened that was not planned before the beginning of time. He's still with you in a way that you have yet to understand. You've cause to be cheerful. Cheerful? What do we do now? Where do we go? It seems you're going to Emmaus, as good a place as any. We were told that some of the near ones were hiding there, the disciples. You understand? What we're after is news, comfort, companionship. Come. If we hurry, we'll be there before nightfall. Let us stop at this inn for supper. Stay with us. Day's almost over. Night's falling. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. All set down in God's hand, meaning the hand of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Micah, Zechariah. It was all prophesied. The Lord himself will choose the sign. A child shall be born to a maiden, and she shall call him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light. Israel will be filled with joy. Everything had been foretold. The birth and the suffering unto death. We despised and rejected him. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was wounded for our sins. He was lashed. We were healed. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. It was the Lord's plan to fill him with grief. He shall live again and make many to be counted righteous before the Lord. For he shall bear all their sins. You see how everything that happened had been announced from beginning to end, and to the new beginning. Trust the Lord's word. Believe. But there's nothing in the scriptures about the power of Rome, the wickedness of Rome. Not even he could stand up against it. It's finished. We're lost. It's all over. All over.
eat. Now that we... Oh, my dear. Dear. Stay with us, Lord. Don't go. Please. You can't go now. The night. The dark. Full of phantoms and wild beasts, Cleopas. But they can do no more harm. He's banished the ghosts, tamed the beasts. You know, as he disappeared, I was thinking that we had to know fear and death and darkness to see his love shine. I was thinking that soon it'll be night. It is night. And we shall be questioned about love. Love. <sighs> you look so beautiful, Ruth. Yes, you do. Thank you, Sarah. But where is Caleb? He'll be bringing Samuel. carrying the standard of the 12th Legion. That's stationed in Syria. And it's true, Pontius Pilate has sent for reinforcements. Samuel, we... come down! Our friends We're are here. waiting for you, Samuel! Get washed, you're covered in dust, and get dressed! <laughs> Samuel, you are welcome. your betrothal. As your older uncle and the head of your family after the death of your father, I have the right and the duty to choose your man for you and have done so. Now, Ruth, I must ask you of your own free will and consent if you accept, as your betrothed, the man I have chosen for you. If you say yes, you reply, this is the man I love. This is the man I love. 
Now the ring. Repeat after me. Behold, thou art consecrated unto me by this ring, according to the law of Moses and Israel. Behold, thou art consecrated unto me by this ring, according to the law of Moses and Israel. <laughs> Wish your father were here to share our joy. is the symbol of Judea, their sign of revolt. And that? It's a fish out of water. Dead in the desert sand, that's how they'll own it up. Oh, my God! I'm ready to face Rome, or those who bear tidings of her. Sejanus landed last night. There's news of a revolt in Pannonia. Do not trouble Tiberius Caesar with rumors, Atticus. Wait for Sejanus to report to him. Lucius Marinus is right. What a series the Egyptian teacher said, any upheaval is forewarned by a commotion of celestial bodies, by blood on the moon. I saw no sign. Heavens. No blood, no anger. You have more gloomy wisdom for me, Curtius. I wouldn't call it gloomy. The aim of Stoic philosophy is to dispel gloom. You and your fashionable philosophy. Only the pleasures of the senses can ease the pains of the spirit. Senses fail, Caesar, as you know, at your age, our age. Speak for yourself. And I think you may keep your philosophy to yourself. Uh, we Romans act too much. Think too little. And a philosophy which teaches courage in adversity, the pursuit of virtue for its own sake, equanimity, isn't that what Rome needs? Don't talk to me about courage and equanimity. You've never known the burden of rule. 
the nightmare of treachery. You haven't seen your own son dying in pain? You did not see it either, Tibes. I see it every night. I hear his screams. I wake up sweating. His murderer or murderers were never caught. Yet many were executed on mere suspicion. They were guilty. They were guilty of being suspected. They deserved to die. You said many, not enough. Not enough to pay for the death of my son, Drusus. And what satisfaction do you find in revenge? It's not revenge, it's policy. They killed him, they've been waiting to kill me, too. Calm, Caesar. Refuse to be moved. Take a calm mind back to Rome. Restore justice to Rome. Rome has become a filthy shambles. Rome needs its emperor. I won't go back to Rome. Thanks, a fair wind that brings you back to Capri, said Janus. Atticus reported rumors of a revolt in Pannonia. False rumors, Caesar. Spread by enemies of Rome and your peace. Since you subdued it, King Banius rules Pannonia in your name and in your peace. No, I won't go back to Rome. I will die here on Capri, and I hope to die in my bed. Oh, you will live. Tiberius, for the glory of Rome and our peace, the arm of your justice. Your crush. arm, Sejanus, and your justice shall crush any attempt to harm you. Whether your enemies be hiding in the forum, or behind the toga of a senator, or even in the nest of your own family. My family, Sejanus. Your niece, my emperor. Agrippina the Elder. He's been exiled to the island of Pandadaria. Tiberius himself gave the order. I did? My memory fails at times, and yet I... Oh, her plot to depose you in favor of one of her two sons has been proved beyond any doubt. It was in the stars woven in their dance. I, I saw it. They are safe. Her two sons are safe, yet safely guarded on the island of Pontia. So there was a third. She bore three sons. Yes, Gaius, Caligula, little boots. Hmm. Still hanging around your legion's camps. Good boy. Born to serve in the army. Quite unlike his brothers, he told me he's ashamed of his mother. Hates her. I like young Caligula. His grandmother I love. Antonio would never fail me. I was so happy when my Drusus married her daughter, the fair Livilla. You wanted to marry her, said Janus. Antonia refused you. She would never consent. You, you understand that I could never allow anyone under no oh, I understand, Caesar. Hearts change. There is time. But there is little time left before the Senate of Rome declares your city an orphan. Your senators demand that you, our emperor, return to Rome and rule it yourself. I won't go back. Such wisdom as ever. Power lies where the emperor lies. Capri, not Rome. Rome has survived for four years without my presence. The, the Senate, the Senate grows wearisome. An example, perhaps. We could have someone shipped over here and thrown from these rocks. Hmm? Decius, perhaps, or Cenarius. 
one or more of the louder mouth senators? If you wish examples to be set, Caesar, they are best set in Rome, where the Romans can see them. The Praetorian Guard is always at your service. Enjoy your retirement, Caesar. Rome is a loud, dirty place. Also treacherous. Also treacherous. Poor Drusus. You seem not to want our emperor back in Rome, Sir Jonas. Where do you think you're going? Leave me. Who are you there? Please, please. please. I've done nothing. Please, please. Who are I've done nothing. What are you up to? What do you want? What? A gift. A gift? What sort of gift? Who for? The emperor. The emperor? A fish. Oh, what? Speak to me. Who is he? He says he's a fisherman. He brings a gift for the emperor. A fish. A fish? Bring him forth. Come. From, from the divine Neptune, our god of the sea. A gift for the divine Tiberius. Not so divine if mortal men can climb his Olympus. Oh, well said. You and your guards have failed in your duties. Throw this man back where he no. came from and report no. the disciplinary act. No, wait. For me, you say, a gift from Neptune. Yes. Strange that he does not deliver it personally. Give it to me. <laughs> You're right, Sir Janus. My friend, as always, if fishermen can get in, so can hired murderers. Throw him down the rock. No! No! I beg you! No! No! No, don't! Don't! No! No! Don't! No! 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 Yesterday, I saw him. At first, I didn't recognize him. But then he called me Peter, the Rock. And then I understood that I was with Armcruster. Jesus was there, facing me, risen, just as he had promised. Thank God we found you. We've searched everywhere. All over Jerusalem. And then this seemed the only place. You are nothing. Humble followers, Cleopas, Zacchaeus. But we bring great news. You saw him. Yes. You didn't see him. Thought you saw him. There's a difference. You doubt our word, man. Thomas is the name. Thomas. No, I don't doubt that you thought you saw him. I saw him too, Thomas. Remember that? Yes, Peter. Must take your word for that. But seeing is believing. I saw, I tell you. And I didn't. And that's what matters to me. Sit with us, Cleopas and Zacchaeus, sir. Or not, sir. My name's Peter. Well, now we know the truth is back in the world. And it's our task to spread the good news. But we're ill prepared to shout the glory of his rising from the grave and the truth of the message that he taught. No one would listen to us. Sometimes I long to revisit the Lake of Galilee, see my old friends, cut them with their nets. How wonderful to be in ignorant peace again to be without responsibility. But I... We accept the burden. The trouble is, we do not know well how to carry it. You have broad shoulders, Peter. Strong enough to bear the weight of your mission.
Shalom. Peace be with you. Sit. Sit. I said we would all be together once more. There is nothing to fear. My old friend Thomas, ever doubting. The man I chose because he would not believe easily. But now you must believe, Thomas. How do I know? My heart's troubled, my mind confused. He died on a cross. Come close, Thomas. The nails also pierced my feet, and the spear my side. My master, and my lord. Because you see, you believe, Thomas. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Stay here in the city. Soon the time will come for the spreading of the good news. Outside of Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit will descend on you, giving you the power of speech, taking away your fear of the enemy. And I myself will be with you, even to the end of the world. Now, as once before, I take this bread and break it. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. I speak only for the Empire. I am the Empire, Nerva, remember? And the Empire's good name is your own. Ah. My darling Columba. My sweet little pet. The only creature that I can really trust. Death, if she's hungry, if it's some frogs and mice. Make sure they're alive. I speak for the restoration of justice. For the emperor as judge in the imperial court of law, sifting the true from the false, law is turned into terror. 
Ptolemy. Wish for some painted former. Take the case of Titus Sabinus. Who? A Roman knight, clubbed, dragged to jail, his property confiscated. An unfounded calumny proved false. Do I know him? You knew him. The past blurs. Yes, Tiberius. That is the danger. We are all old men and in danger of forgetting that the Empire stood for law. There are wise men writing history books. They record the decline from the past to... Terror. Blood on the marble. The reign of Tiberius ends in... Beware, courteous. Oh, my lord, Caesar, there was a time when you loved the truth. Father and I are not young boys to be frightened by threats of torture or decapitation. Old men have nothing to fear. This old man has much to fear. Go back to Rome. Show yourself. Restore the rule of law. The city is damned. It smells of something worse than blood. Sejanus keeps order. He has a strong nose. Yes, Sejanus. You have something to say against Sejanus? An efficient soldier, a firm administrator, a man who, as you say, has a strong nose. He is good at smelling out opposition. And yet, the city stinks of corruption. And there is no man who is not afraid. Except Sir Janus. That man is the courage that I no longer have. I won't go to Rome. You heard me. I will die here on Capri. Die? Yes, and then turn into a god as real as Neptune. And then the Empire will be. Who? Not many candidates left. Sometimes you must wonder why. Nine. Seven. Well, nine again, your lucky number. I'm lucky today. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Julius Valerius Licinius, standard bearer of the Third Legion Augusta. He served in Africa before being transferred to the cohort of Capri. I did. Man, I think I have news for you. Your two men have, I understand, been disciplined. What they might call the ultimate discipline. Mine is to come tomorrow. I have spoken to the Emperor and persuaded him to be merciful to you, that is. I am grateful. Yes, precisely. Now, if I may speak to you as man to man, it was foolish to frighten the Emperor that way, to present the outside world in the form of a big fish, a big fish with, perhaps, a dagger in its belly. Raving folly. My father is a veteran who spent his youth on the battlefield. He's still serving in the Seventh Legion in Gaul, hoping for me to benefit from his merits. I thank you. For him, also. I require you to be grateful. From now on, you're seconded to my service at the Emperor's command. To the Praetorian Guard? No, Valerius, that will be going too far. You're to be in my own personal service, to perform a personal office. Rome is in grave danger. Well, even you will have observed that the Emperor is very old. Hmm? There is the question of imperial succession. The young Prince Gaius Caligula, you know him? A soldier. He was in camp with us at... Hardly. 
a soldier despite his boots. The Empress family has always engraved danger in bad times like these. But he is the Emperor's grand nephew. He's an imperial candidate. He lives with his grandmother, the Lady Antonia. They are precious people. I wish their lives to be guarded well. By me? By you, Valerius. Watch them. The comings, goings, report to me regularly. You will be glad to be back in Rome. I liked it here. Oh, it's a pretty little place, no doubt. Pretty little people, too. But soft. Too soft. We need men like you back in the mainland, Valerius. Pack your kit. Report to me for your marching orders. I will. Thank you. your noses and curl your lips as if compromise were a dirty word. It is a dirty word. Right. Yeah, well, it is only through compromise that we may keep the faith alive. We are ruled by an infidel race. One stroke of the sword. They could sever the cord that binds us into one people. They could destroy the temple. No. no. Yes, yes, we live uncomfortably with the Romans. But at least we live. This is no life. That Sadducee talk, Seth. Well, I almost forgot. You are the son of a Sadducee. <laughs> and what's wrong with Sadducee talk? Without a Sadducee, you'd be burning incense before Tiberius' statue. Oh, oh, sad. Our Jewish love for freedom can always defeat Roman arrogance. You zealots would have us all crucified. No, and you're and wrong, wrong sad. Sad. Yes, yes, and destroyed us all. My sons, throughout our history, we have been called to defend the integrity of our inheritance against foreign oppression and against our own weakness. Necessary as it was, our rejection of the claim made by Jesus of Nazareth showed us once again the reality of the bitter conflicts among us. And you may be sure that the Romans, too, are aware of it. Your words are from your heart, Rabban Gamaliel. May I? I trust that you, too, will speak from your heart and from your mind, also. <laughs> you are? Stephen, from Alexandria. And like Saul here, a Pharisee, son of Pharisees. And a Greek at heart. No, Samuel, a Jew. I know how you resent all that's foreign, all that threatens our freedom. Caleb is right. And what else could your future brother-in-law be, Samuel? <laughs> <laughs> I learned the language of the Greeks. I read their books. They say you also learned wrestling from one of their Olympic champions. Yeah. He could teach you, Caleb. Whenever he likes. <laughs> <laughs> Although their philosophers received sparks of the truth, I know they are far from the light. Oh, with your permission, Raban. Our brother Caleb should not forget that the Torah has been revealed to the world of the Gentiles by our own Hebrew scholars who translated it into the language of the Greeks. To know the Greek culture is an advantage for us. Raban, may I? You may be right, Saul. Paul, is it not? You are a Roman citizen, or at least the bearer of a Roman name. I am a Jew. My father lives in Tarsus, in Cilicia. His father was a great benefactor of that city, so Rome bestowed on him the highest honor it could grant a subject in its empire. Now, you and I may doubt that it is indeed an honor. Some may prefer to call it a blemish on our name. Either way, I did not choose it. You misunderstand me, Saul, or Paul. I agree with you that to no other places are the languages is valuable, but foreign customs can be infectious. No, the Jews like us said. The divisions we show are not only doctrinal, 
and political. Beyond these divisions, there is doubt and uncertainty, even among those of you who have belonged to the same sect. We forget that we were called as a holy nation, and the call is one. Exactly. Well, exactly what our high priest Caiaphas said when he realized that this false messiah from Nazareth was threatening the very existence of our nation. Yes. We must be ready for any sacrifice in order to prevent our nation from perishing. It was decided too quickly to hand him over to Pilate's butchers. We welcomed him as our deliverer when he entered Jerusalem. Jesus betrayed his promise. He was one of us. Another Jew was delivered to a Roman cross. There is no redemption in it. No one could forgive his sin. Blasphemy! Yes, blasphemy upon blasphemy. We've had enough of these false prophets. Well, who was he? Some ignorant carpenter who breaks the Sabbath, always burbling about love. Yeah. You sneer at his trade? You yourself are a tent maker, Saul. Not the same thing at all. I practice a skill because that is ordained by our Jewish tradition. However, I do know other things besides the stitching of canvas. He knew the Torah. Our holy scriptures were never out of his mouth. Huh. And what's wrong with burbling about love, as you call it? Yeah. I'll tell you what's wrong. By love, he meant submission. Turning the other cheek, putting up with Roman injustice. Right. Admit, all of you, as much in what he said, we must change ourselves, even as we change our system of rule. Soul and the body are inseparable. A soul in chains. The chains are our own sins, as well as foreign oppression. And don't speak so disparagingly of love. On a practical level, it may be love that will save us. We Jews play into Roman hands by hating one another, sect against sect, division not unity. But, but how can we accept this exaltation of a false prophet? The Son of God, the Messiah. You repeat his blasphemy, Stephen. Well, the Messiah was prophesied. Is prophesied, Stephen. Is. We've let the Romans kill another Jew. This man speaks blasphemy. Enough. Stephen, Saul, all of you, Time to let your minds rest. We firmly reject any claim that Jesus was anything but a good man. We all need unity of heart. Let us pray for this now. Shema Israel. Go in peace. Saul, I learned something today. I see now that you're a man of great faith. I would like us to be friends. A friend is more necessary than fire and water. Cicero said that. A great Roman. So you see, not everything that comes from Rome is bad.
Get serious now. Now. your houses. Go back to your houses. Forgive him. He's a little overwrought. Look, he's in pain. Surely an apology would be enough. Who and what are you? I'm a Roman citizen. You're a yes, I am. But I'm also a citizen of Rome. My name, if you must know, is Paul. It's Julian Rowe. Well, Paul, if that's what you're to be called, we have our duty. And this one needs teaching a lesson. And he'll learn it while he's looking down from that hill out there. Come on, you. They hide up here on Mount Gerizim, noble pilot. They've hoarded a huge treasure in it. Gold, silver, Greek and Roman money. And gems, they say, such as no Oriental monarch has ever seen. They're not like the other Jews, these Samaritans. Not unlike the Galileans. Rejected children of Israel, so to say. Yet no less cunning or able. The dislike that surrounds them could make our decision to attack them acceptable. There are many here in Judea who would secretly rejoice at it. I've learned to wait, Quintilius, during my office in this land. Let them hide up there, Mount Gerizim, is it? Let them increase their secret treasure ten. A thousandfold, the more they toil, the richer our harvests at the right time. Meanwhile, we shall continue showing Roman strength, celebrating imperial power in the name of the divine Tiberius. May he live long before joining his brother gods. Lucius Aelius Sejanus has sent word to manifest to you his satisfaction for the way in which you conducted yourself when faced with the disturbances regarding the man Jesus. Smartly stifled, quickly forgotten. Just a few crosses. We need more. These people are never convinced that their destiny has been sealed by Rome. They breed revolt. Our good prefect, the noble Sejanus, has a particular contempt for the Jews. He had to deal with a few of them in Rome. They are like weeping willows, he once told me. They bend easily, only to snap back with more strength. Truth graces your lips, Pontius Pilate. <laughs> only today we have arrested another hothead. A young man who attacked one of our guards. A zealot, by the looks of it. Good. I have often reproached myself during the past few days for having let go that bandit, the zealot called Barabbas. Though I still think the man from Nazareth was a higher potential risk for us. His case puzzled me. His death relieved me. And now, fortune, our wise goddess, gives us back the zealot. Bring him here, Calpurnius. Mm. 
Now wait. Wait. Patience is a goddess we must honor as often as we can so that she may reward us generously. In two days, our Jewish subjects will celebrate the feast of the first fruits of spring. Shavuot, they call it. We shall judge this young zealot there. They will have a new reason to remember yet another solemn date in their calendar. <laughs> this young zealot, has he a family? His mother, two sisters. Are they beautiful? The girls, I mean. They're young, I'm told. Seize them, mother and daughters. Send them to Rome. My good friend Sir Janus will appreciate a gift of young slaves. Good way to show my gratitude for his consideration. What? Outside the temple? He knows how dangerous it is to arouse attention. How welcome for the Romans any pretext is to bear down on us. You sound just like Caleb. It was not a fight. Just a friendly scuffle. An occasion to relieve our tension, the passion of our discussion. Stephen was desperate afterwards. Did he provoke Caleb? I told you, no one provoked anyone. We were like children at play. Just a scuffle it was. What will they do to Caleb? No one can tell. <laughs> well, nothing if they believe our story. Caleb got carried away. He didn't realize the man he was pushing away was a Roman guard. They will never believe it. <laughs> I will ask to be heard by the procurator himself if necessary. I will tell him that my son Caleb has never done anything we could be ashamed of. I will plead with him. Stephen and I bribed a guard. We spoke to Caleb through the bars. He said to warn you not to plead, not to beg for him. He would hate you for that, he said. Mother, may I walk Samuel to the door? You're betrothed to him, don't you remember? Go, go with him. leave this house. It's not safe. I shall ask your uncle to let me take you to my home. Tomorrow, if we can. You know that we cannot. Not until Caleb is safely back with us. Our time is racing past us, Ruth, my love. Rome has conquered our nation and our time. You must believe what I'm saying. Come away. Mother grows weaker every day. You saw her, heard her. She is ready to fall on her knees and beg the Roman procurator for mercy. I love her. And you, Samuel. I love more than life. But she needs me. Besides, I must prepare myself to be a good wife. I am not yet ready to surrender. Oh, this is not a war, Ruth. There is no attack. There will be no surrender. What I mean is that I'm so young. I still have little girl's dreams. It is hard for me to think of being alone with you, a woman and a man. We are meant to be one flesh, one being. A new creature formed by a man and a woman. Your sister can take care of your mother. No. My place is still here with them. I will not leave them as long as Caleb is in danger. I shall find a way to move you. All three of you, to a safer place. Ruth! Ruth! I'm here, Mother. Go now, and pray for Caleb. For us. I... I do, do love you so much.
Will Ravan Gamaliel help? He's powerless. It's what he feared most, and it's happened. Oh, there was nothing we could do. Well, nothing, Stephen. One of our fellow students is about to be crucified. Caleb the Crucified. Well, not so terrible, perhaps. It was good enough for your mock messiah. His death was no mockery, Saul. It still haunts me. You say another Roman cross. You're a Roman citizen. Can't you do something? It could be useful sometimes, but not now. No. A word should be sent to Caleb's family, though. Sometimes Roman power yields to the power of gold. But they have no money. Your uncle Matthias does. We can try and ask for his help. But I heard that, like many others, he wants to follow Jesus. Oh. And give up everything he owns. A contagious madness. Madness? The followers of Jesus give shelter to the sick and bread to the needy. Only the Lord will help us. And Caleb. The Lord who is one will guide us. come. He says they were dragged from the house like beasts. Just like beasts. They take them to the coast of Galilee, but they will end up in Rome. In the slave market. The roof. My Ruth. I told you, Stephen. There's only one way. Strike back. Kill them. Violence breeds violence. They hold the axe. Let's not give them more victims, Samuel. I'd rather die than live with this shame. The Lord will rescue us, Samuel. He's come to our help in harder times. He's deaf! 
The Lord is deaf to our cry, Stephen. We're alone. And Ruth is... May he forgive you, for he hears you well. He's not forgotten us. We have to walk his way. The way that he sets for us. And I'm convinced that it is not by killing that we shall win. Not by killing! The main task in Rome as I see it, is to contain the dissension in those areas which, through cunning, have impinged on your own family. Now, the Lady Lavilla, if I may say so, is highly impressionable. She has lived as a widow for too long. If I may repeat my desire to... No! Antonio would never consent. I cannot go against the decision of a mother. What if Lady Antonia withdrew her objection? She wants my daughter-in-law to keep face with the memory of her husband, my poor dead Drusus. If you wish by marriage to become a kind of substitute son to me... I would never dare so presume. Turn yourself into an imperial candidate. It's the furthest thing from my mind. Keep your place. Keep your distance. You do your work well, let things stay as they are. I take it you have been hearing things from Atticus and Nerva. Word of warning, Caesar. Beware of mild old men. They're my friends. Even if they don't spare me their disagreements. I hope to soon put in your hands evidence to the contrary. Trust nobody. I'm going to put a cordon around this island. You will be safe here. My astrologer tells me that the signs may soon turn auspicious for a brief visit to Rome. I may see Rome before I die. Nerva is right when he talks about imperial duty. Perhaps I... Have a duty, Sir Janus, to see you at work. I work only for your sake, for your protection. Suspicion is like a dagger. It can never be sharpened enough. Our lives depend on it. I told you I did not suspect Gaius Caligula, but I do believe that he is capable of being tempted into an act of criminal treason. Ambition intoxicates. He has bad friends. Herod Agrippa, grandson of the great Herod, is a champion of ambition. The dreams of ruling troublesome Palestine one day. I thought things were quiet in Palestine. Things are not quiet in Palestine. As rebellious Jews, is there no pleasing them? All is well, Caesar. Attend to your health. The empire is stable under your rule. My trusted friend, Lucius Marinus. Remain at your service here in Capri while I'm away in Rome, searching into foes known and unknown, preparing for your visit. Uh -huh. May I suggest you address a letter to the Senate, mighty Caesar? It will appease their anxieties, <laughs> dispel their fears. There's little hope left. An emperor obsessed with fear in the hands of a man who fabricates fear. Look, Nova. Swathed in fog, Capri is as remote as the moon from Rome. Ah, beware of the insidious influence of the hour, Atticus. Our poet said the dying of light brings oblique thoughts to the mind, shrouds the heart, breeds dejection. Oh, we must react. Take action. How? Wasting more words on Tiberius. He refuses to listen to what he pretends to. He quickly turns to report them to Sejanus. The spider's too smart. It's webbed too tight. A delegation from the Senate. 
I must leave for Rome as soon as possible and lead back here the worthiest members of our Senate. Tiberius will have to listen to the voice of Rome. You'll hear the truth. Truth? Every one of those worthy senators that you plan to bring here is closely watched, even in his own home. Servants and kinsmen alike have been turned into informers. Crimes, true or false, are reported at every sunrise. They, too, are caged in fear. Well, I shall leave tomorrow. There's no ship due here before another week. And Neptune has an angry look. You are too discouraged to be well informed, Atticus. A ship landed last night. It was brought here by Otto Sejanus. <laughs> Our spider is getting ready to return to Rome and keep weaving his plot. But he will not leave Tiberius alone. I'm sure he's already assigned Marinus his own piece of evil work. Come. He was helping ready myself for our good mission. Let us not give them any more time. Appoint a chosen group of delegates. They must go to Kepri and bring to Tiberius the appeal of his Rome, of our orphan city. We have listened to Koshir's Nerva. We shall vote on his appeal that a delegation be sent from this Senate to our Emperor. Those who approve of it will be on the right-hand side of the hall. Those who disapprove, on the left. I ask your permission. I, too, have heard what the noble Cacheus Nerva proposes. It could indeed be advisable, as your vote suggests, were it not in open contrast to the manifest wish of the divine Tiberius that none of you be distracted from your duties in the city. He knows that each one of you is totally absorbed in rendering loyal service to the Empire and its Emperor, he urges all of you to stay in your places as he has prompted me to resume mine. I'm here to convey a special message from Tiberius. These are his words, my voice his. Let me break the Imperial seal. My lords, senators of Rome, if I knew what to tell you or how to tell it or what to leave altogether untold for the present, may all the gods and goddesses in heaven bring me to an even worse damnation than I daily suffer. Who else? Julius and Drusus, exiled as the traitors they are. Caligula, <laughs> unworthy of his manly toga. A silly boy playing with soldiers. Which does not prevent some of our illustrious senators from licking his little boots. Mm. Antonius' son, Claudius, is not even to be considered a stuttering idiot, posing as a 
philosopher and historian. I've read some of his books. There is a mind behind that brawny forehead. The mind of a senile man, frightened of power, a weakling. That brawny forehead would disgrace the imperial crown. So headless Rome cannot find a new head. <laughs> Unless... Unless? Unless the new emperor were a born leader. A man of true courage, acquainted with power and the game of ruling. A commanding figure. Or to be explicit, the commander of our Praetorian Guard. He tore his hand on his nail. It was a little nail, but you should have seen the tears and heard his howls. I took him in my arms and quieted him. But his crying gave him a good appetite for his dinner. <laughs> it was a mutton stew with herbs and a little wine. I can see him now, his mouth full and his Lips stained with what he was eating. <laughs> Wolfing bread. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfing? <laughs> like any other boy. Seems so strange now. So ordinary. We never know. We never know. The wind. Remember his words. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. You are right, James, our wise brother. Those were his words.
Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, give ear to my words. He's drunk. They're all drunk. It's the new wine. I heard that. <laughs> I'm not drunk, nor are any of my friends here. It's only the third hour of the day. The taverns have hardly been opened yet. <laughs> no, no. This is no drunken talk, but the giving forth of the good news. <laughs> Most of you, what was said by the prophet Joel, I will pour forth my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood when the day of the Lord comes. That great and notable day! <laughs> yes, yes, I say it again. That great and notable day is upon us. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God by mighty works and wonders and signs. Jesus, crucified, slain by lawless men. Him, God has raised up, having loosed the pangs of death. This Jesus did God raise up. Of this, we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you see and hear. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus, who was crucified. <laughs> Judea, for the wonders and the signs are upon you. What do we have to do? Repent. Be baptized. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Save your souls. Save yourselves from these Blind leaders! 
You will answer for this in the accepted Roman manner. Do you know what that is? They will be singing songs tonight in the tavern about an eagle without claws. For the first time in the whole course of my procuratorship, the zealots have got the better of us. Make sure the point of view is sort of sharp before you fall on it. I'd hate for you to botch your suicide as you botched. Ah, get him out of here. We have to report this unfortunate incident to the Emperor. I don't think Quintilius, the Emperor, will care one way or the other. A minor incident, wouldn't you say? Unless you've already written a report for the Emperor, suggesting that the procurator Pontius Pilate is ready for replacement and his assistant ripe for promotion. I would never dream of so disloyal an act. No, of course not, Quintilius. But I'll never forget, if I fall, you fall with me. Now get on with the prosecution of Roman justice. The Romans took them away. They're still looking for you, waiting for you to fall into one of their many traps. God will not abandon them. Where was he when they were taken? with them as he is now with us. This ingenious rescue, you thought of it? There was no other way. Saul and I went to your Uncle Matthias, begged him to buy your freedom, but he has joined the Nazarenes. Samuel gave his life for me, and now you too will be in danger. No, I help you as a friend, not as a fellow zealot. I think the zealots are wrong. Or should I say impractical? You won't prevail, Caleb. The true road lies another way. The Sadducee way. The Pharisee way. I have been thinking a lot about the man from Nazareth. There was hope in what he said. Saul would say that was blasphemy. I suppose it is blasphemy. Let Saul call it what he likes. Jesus brought light to us. There only seems to be darkness for me and my family. They are alive. And life is what counts. Pray for them. You may trust your prayers, Stephen. I choose my sword. Go to the place called Mesad Hasidim, on the hills by the Dead Sea. You'll reach it by dawn. I have a friend there, Ananias. He will take care of you. And one of us? No, he's no zealot. He belongs to the Essenes. The Essenes will protect you. They live the life of the spirit, cut off from the flesh, waiting for a new world to come. That's as impractical a way as yours. To many, the Essenes represent the very essence of our Jewish faith. They believe that life is a fight between light and darkness. They strive to purify themselves by living in caves, isolated from the outside world. They own nothing and share the little they need to survive. Their only treasures are their water wells. They are obsessed with cleanliness. I am Ananias, Stephen's friend. He is right. The Essenes are constantly preoccupied with the cleansing of the body. The body is a poor thing destined to decay. We must transcend it and live in the spirit. But we must purify the body as it serves as a symbol of our inner purity.
It's not easy to forget we have bodies. These men never take a woman in their arms? How do they breed? We do not breed. After all, the end of the world is coming, is it not? The beginning of the world, so I was taught. The building of a free Jewish nation. They have no time for these dreams of nationhood. There has to be a purification of the soul before the last day comes. Sometimes you say we, sometimes they. Do you truly belong here? I know I never could. You have not eaten anything since we left. I do not want you to die of starvation. I began to die when Caleb was taken. My mother died. Uncle Matthias. I was thinking of him last night, our Nazarene uncle. Remember how he used to read old stories to us? One evening, shortly after father died, he told us of an ancient king of Israel who said that the day of death is better than the day of birth. He had come to hate life, he said, for all that is done in this world is evil. All is vain. I've never forgotten it. What are you doing? Go back! My brothers, help me. Help a poor cripple. Help me. In the name of the Lord, help me. Help a poor cripple. Give. Give in the name of the Lord. Give. Help me. Help me. Help a poor cripple. In the name of the Lord, give. Give. Help me. I have no silver or gold. give you. In the name of the Lord, rise.
nothing. I've no power. It, it was the power of our Lord, the power and grace of his son, Jesus Christ. To the Lord, all things are possible. He bids the hungry eat and gives drink to the thirsty. He makes the blind see and the lame walk. Praise to his name! Praise, Praise to his name! Praise to his name. Your name? Stephen. I baptize you, Stephen, in the name of our Lord. Noble senators of Rome, to grant me their protection. It is to this assembly that I entrust my honor, my life. I am here today, alive, able to talk to you, inform you, only thanks to some obscure informer who alerted me of a murderous attempt on my life. What is he doing in here? Oh, oh, our guard sees the criminals, but just within a few hours, before their hands could strike, but by attacking me, they were threatening the majesty of Rome. The plan was to bring back Agrippina and her two sons from exile. Tiberius himself had sentenced them for treason. I have informed the emperor of this latest danger, which was averted only by the Graces of the gods and his equally divine favor. I ask you to listen to Lucius Marinos. Lords of the Senate. I bear to you news from Capri, a message from Tiberius Caesar. In recognition of his many merits, of his faithful and loyal services to Rome and myself, its emperor, I have decreed that our prefect of the Praetorium, the noble Lucius Aelius Sejanus, my partner in the labor of ruling, be associated to me in the consulship for this new year. I salute Lucius Sejanus, Consul of Rome, and exhort you, Lords of the Senate, to acclaim with me worth, wisdom, and valor. Hail and be well. <laughs> Nerva, my dear friend. An unexpected visit, though doubly welcome. Well, I was anxious to see you again. You've been away too long. It's not easy to leave, Capri. And Tiberius clings to me. Even though at times he resents my sincerity. How is he? Trapped. Trapped in his fears. At moments I think I can reach him, make myself understood. Brief moments. He 
quickly falls back to his obsessions. <laughs> he, he looks vigorous, healthy. But his eyes betray his confusion. They're weary, beclouded. So, there is no hope that he may return to Rome. Not as long as his fears are kindled. Said Janus. I heard that he had appointed him to share the consulship with him. I could not believe it. Neither could Rome, most of it. But it's true. We have an emperor in exile and one in the making. <laughs> Sejanus uh, keeps weaving his plot. In his last letter, Curtius Atticus called him the spider. Uh, you should be more careful. Sir Janus does not forgive. Our gods be praised for the few brave men we have left. But what is to be done? How can we make Tiberius listen and believe? I tried in vain to convince the Senate to send him a delegation. You. You, Antonia, are our last hope. He respects and loves you. You are the mother-in-law to his beloved Drusus. grateful to you for having loved his dead son as your own. Although he himself has been bent by Sejanus, he blesses you in his heart for your unflinching refusal to allow your daughter to marry him. My father gave me this wine when Lavilla was born. I wish that she had aged as wisely. <laughs> Age does not always entail wisdom, Antonio. As to the wine, honey and water will cure it when it turns sour. <laughs> oh. Wise Nerva. Honey and water. Love and forgiveness. I do love La Bella, but I cannot forgive her mistake. Let us toast to my Lavilla, Nerva, as long as she is my daughter. For the day she should consent to marry Sejanus, she will no longer be. May the gods be praised for our brave women. We risk a lot, Antonia, by opposing the prefect. Prisca! Tell Pallas to come here at once. Tell him to bring his tablets with him. I will dictate a letter to Tiberius. Pallas will take it to him in Capri. We must be cautious. They may suspect him. Prevent him from approaching the Emperor. Time is trickling out, Nerva. We must move before we too are caught in the web. At your service, noble Antonio. It's a joy to see you here, Cuchez Never. Beloved Tiberius, my emperor and friend, it is with a heart heavy with pain, but filled with concern for you, that I beg you to heed what I am about to disclose to you. Read this as truth, for love generates only truth. And I love you dearly, as I loved your dead son, Drusus. That Egyptian slave, where is she? She's never around when she's needed. What is her name? Um, Sirica. Sirica! She's in the kitchen. And you are? Sarah. She played with me yesterday. She's from Jeru Jerusalem. The new slave Pontius Pilate sent to my master, Sir Janus. What do you wish? 
Blandina's tunic. You were to clean it. Bring it here. What do you know of this girl? There's something special about her. I hardly noticed when Sojana first brought her to me how beautiful she is. And seemingly well educated. Jewish girls learn to read and write when very young. Even if they don't have our good goddess Fabulina to help them learn the language. <laughs> you need the goddess Fabiana to teach you how to walk, Procula. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there it is. Come, Blandina. Let me finish dressing you. How old are you? Eighteen. I was told you had a sister. She was killed on the boat that brought us here. Your mother and father, are they still in your land? I lost my father when I was very young. My mother died when we were about to be brought here. You have no one else left in your family? My brother, Caleb. Yes, now don't go. It's your head. Did you leave a love behind? No. My sister Ruth, she was betrothed to marry. I had no time for love. Wait till you meet a handsome Roman. You'll find the time soon enough. You look beautiful. Turn around for me. Mm. Time is rushing. Quick. You don't want to be late for your lesson, do you? No, Mother. Come with me, Sarah. I must go and greet my father. Landina! Father! Beautiful and blessed. Oh, my little girl. You ready for school? Hmm? I saw your good teacher cross into the garden. He's waiting for you. Yes, Father. Sarah will take me to him. A gift from Pontius Pilate. Good man. Princely gift. Plotina, she will take you to meet him. I have need of Sarah. Go. Oh. Oh, Jewish girls know how to massage. No. No. I'm sure you do, or you will learn. Come here. Come here. Venus must have no lighter hands. No more tempting eyes. Oh, oh I could indeed adore you as a goddess. Oh, break you like clay. You are my gift.
to do it all over again. Who are you? What are you running from? There she is. Report to Procula. Damn girl. She broke a precious vase. Still, I should thank her. She made me run like a polo chasing Daphne. Healthy exercise in the morning. So you have news for me? Pichaeus Nerva came to see the Lady Antonia. They accuse you of treason. A messenger will leave tonight for Capri with a letter from Antonia to Tiberius. It will be delivered into the hands of Curtius Atticus. Your loyalty and alertness will be duly rewarded, Valerius. Valerius. <laughs> My Valerius. You make me happy. <laughs> you remind me so much of your father. I have been preparing a spelt soup, your favorite. <coughs> yes. Smoke is always a problem on windy days. Soon, I hope. I shall make you a, a spelt cake. Oh, that will be a good day for me, your wedding. What is it, Valerius? I have met a girl. I cannot put her out of my mind. Surely worthy of a Roman officer to be. If you love her, she has my blessing. This house is empty, with your father still away. I have only just met her mother. I don't even know her name. She's a slave. That awakening she will provide for your father. He wrote to me that the only relief for him in the cold nights of Gaul was dreaming of you, walking well ahead of him in your officer's garb. He has sacrificed his best years to help you achieve what was denied to him by a low birth and lack of education. I thought you were happy to be well on your way to a higher rank. You're winning the noble Sejanus's favor, made us certain. I am very uncertain, Mother. Something crept into my mind this morning. I've been thinking about it all day. I wanted to see you. Perhaps because I need your reassurance. Come, let's talk. Suddenly I realize there is something dark in what I've been commissioned to do. Spying on people, reporting, informing. This cannot be what Father fought and suffered for. It makes me feel unclean. Ashamed of myself. What I read in the eyes of that girl was a cry for help. Then sudden mistrust and fear. I am a spy, Mother. Working for a man who is a leader of spies. He is our prefect. The first man in Rome after our Caesar. I trusted him, Mother. Believe me, I did. Only this morning I saw him. I caught him. It was as if a mask had suddenly dropped from his face. The girl was running away from him. He looked like a wolf ready to kill.
I have known of sudden jealousy. A sudden awakening, Mother. I feel I cannot trust him as I did before. I was convinced I was serving Rome. I suspect I'm serving an unscrupulous tyrant. Shall be where fate wants us to be. Together. But I am still married. You will divorce your wife. Not as long as your mother objects to our wedding. Now the time has come for you to ask her again to force her to give her consent. Then nothing will stand between us and the summit. Tiberius will be very much alone. Oh, no, you forget about Gaius Caligula. Eighteen years of foolish soldierly games. A puppet whose strings will soon be cut. Hmm? Soon, those little boots will never trample over our dreams again. Yes, I will convince my mother. She should be proud that her daughter has tamed the man who has mastered Rome. told me I could find you here. She also told me how Sir John is. I'm a slave. I must learn to accept this as a fact. I have to go back to his house. Procula promised me she'd watch over you. But Apicate's wife knows you will be safe, at least until something can be done to rescue you. I wish I knew how. I've never known anyone like you. You are a free man and a Roman. I'm a Jew. Roman slaves us. Rome killed my mother and my sister. Emperors, procurators are not Rome. Not the true Rome. I want to tell you this. Since I saw you, I've been unable to keep you out of my mind. They took my slave collar off to make me look more attractive but I'm still a slave, no more than an object to be bought and sold. You, you do not even know my name. Sarah. It is Sarah. It means princess in our language. How little of one's destiny is in a name. Destinies can change. Come, I'll walk you home. How are you called? Valerius. It has to do with wishing well. Vale, be well. Vale. There's a lot I want to learn about you and your land. Mother, please no, listen. No, for the hundredth time, no. You are wasting your time, La Villa. You were married to one of Rome's best sons. That should be your title of honor. I did not bring you into this world to see your rank, to see your beauty. Lord, to serve a criminal and enemy of Rome. Jonas's only crime is to wish for Rome to return to her forgotten glory. Mother, please, 
please. I... I... I love this man more than I ever loved Drew Sissy. Don't you dare. I did not choose Drusus. I was handed to him. The son of your beloved Tiberius. He must have enjoyed his bed enough to want to sacrifice me on the bed of his son. You. You will never shame your mother nor the memory of your father, the only man in my life. You will not say one more word. Oh, I regret not having spoken sooner. The truth frightens you, mother. Here it is, the whole truth for you to relish. I hated Drusus. Hated him to the point that I did not hesitate to hold the hand of Sejanus when he gave him the poison that set him free from my hatred, that set me free from a mock marriage. Yes, noble mother. I helped kill Drusus with these hands, your little girl's hands. <laughs> You will leave this house at once. You will never return to it. You will forget that I was once your mother. Mother, you won't mention... Pallas! You. You will see my... This woman to the door. She is never to enter it again. Mother... Never! Never. You heard everything? Not only what was said today. What does that mean? I was sent here by Sejanus to spy on you and report to him. So, you. What made you change your mind? Learning the truth. See. I was blind with my small ambition. So, today you learn the final horror. You have seen the bottom of the pit. You can call yourself fortunate that you can climb out of it. I will escort Pallas with your letter to Capri. They will try to kill him. We must warn Nerva. And Caius Caligula you must come to Rome at once. They can both take shelter in my house with me. Sir Janus will never dare to assail my home. You are not safe, nor are your walls strong enough to protect you from Sir Janus. I will go to Nerva. Caligula will be advised. He counts many supporters among the legions. One of our best commanders, Sertorius Macro, is his best friend. My son, Claudius, must be alerted. So far, his vagaries have kept him from immediate danger. But he is still a survivor among the candidates to succeed his uncle Tiberius. Go to him. There is a person I must see before I leave. There are lives to be saved or lost. First things first. 
Where will I find Claudius? Look for him where there are books. He frequents the bookstalls behind the Temple of Janus in the Forum. As for Paulus, please. I will fight to save him, should the price be my own life. Maybe one day you will forgive me. Oh, yes. <laughs> I lost that power if I ever had it. I lost that power today when I lost a daughter. Go now, please. Ah! Ah! Give me my love. Shall be a feast to be marked out in red. The year is smiling the veils of rain. A grown bejeweled can find her greening heart. Blessed by gods and men, resounding with our hymns. Grown is a light and radiant forever. Let us hear it while we are away. Let us see that over there. Oh, 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 to oh, 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 you, you, you needn't worry about me. I know these thieves. Come, I want you to look at this. It's remarkable. But the many things are truly splendid. The I noble Antonio feels your love is You have nurtured a serpent, Tiberius, a poisonous snake, who, unlike your tame pet Columba, is about to strike at the very heart of our Rome. The serpent has a name that you honored by associating him in the consulship with you. I have the proof of his treason. He must be crushed before he springs to his last deadly attack. I wish we could have reached Capri in a faster time than it took us. Sir Jonas must be seized, killed. He and his family, and Livilla, and whoever helped him. Gaius Caligula must be brought here, and the command of the Praetorian Guard is to be taken by Sertorius Macro. Where is uh, Nerva? Staying safely with the Lady Antonia for the moment. Let him come here. He'll be safer at my side and I'm with him. <sighs> you are assigned, promoted, to my Praetorian Guard, young man. And you return for duty on Capri to be at my side. you shall receive the Emperor's consent to your wedding. Fortune be with you and the great Sejanus. Wait! 
Tiberius's letter? Oh, it came, as promised. An astute threading of empty words, a net woven to bring me to my ruin. He betrayed his promise. Accuse me of treason against the majesty of Rome. Macro is the new prefect. I am dead, Lavella. Move on. No. You save yourself. Kajanus! No. It is you who I betrayed. Our dream, not Rome. Kajanus! Forgive me if you can. Sir John is his wife and child. The child is in the garden playing. Well, bring her in and find her mother. slaves assembled here. You have become the property of Gaius Caligula. You will be transferred to the palace by order of the new prefect. Emperor, this from a dying mother. Tiberius, you are no better than Sir Jonas. Both of you have the blood of innocence on your hands. Many years ago, my husband took the life of your beloved son, Drusus. You now slay the flesh of my flesh. a murder with more murder, Tiberius. You do not impart justice. Only death. I know the situation better than you. After all, Jerusalem is my city. If the garrison here in Samaria is as small as you say, well, you can destroy it before Pilate gets his Syrian reinforcements. He can send no troops from Jerusalem. He needs every man he has to defend himself from our threats. And you propose leading us? No. Help is what I offer. I am a Judean. And Samaria is the affair of the Samaritans. 
But you must all start to think in terms of a bigger freedom. National, not provincial. A long time. Now, remember that our worst enemy is our lack of discipline. The Romans found their strength in it. They are welded in one iron structure. We fight in bands. Look here. The Roman legion numbers about 5,300 men. The fighting force of that legion is divided into ten lots named cohorts. Each cohort numbers 480 men and is itself made up of six groups named centuries, each century numbering 80 men. The officer in charge of the century is called the centurion. To know how they organize themselves, is to learn how to oppose order to their order. Discipline to their discipline. Quiet. They are strong, not invincible. If we strike at their leaders, seize their standards, we shall break their ranks. Now, this is how we shall move. Evil menace vies for the throne, and a reign of terror begins, snaring all in its web. You will share the imperial bed. Don't do anything foolish, they'll kill us both. The real life people and events that altered human history. Shove them in the arena. Let them part of the game. Jennifer O'Neill, Richard Kiley, Ava Gardner, Ben Vereen, Anthony Andrews, the television event of 1985, AD Tomorrow.